Kombringspass and the Hochard Pass of the descent and ascent respectively of the high plateau where the Bergplatz camping sites are found. Regardless of which direction you drive this pass, it will be a visual feast. It's also the biggest of the Bavianskloof passes in terms of altitude gain and loss. This is the last pass you'll encounter before exiting the bioreserve and entering the Cambria Valley. Compressed within its 5,5 km length, the road descends 333 meters via 73 bends, corners and curves, resulting in an average gradient of 1 in 16, but there are some sections as steep as 1 in 8. The road is single width for most of its length, making overtaking impossible and passing difficult, where one of the vehicles will need to reverse back to a wider point. This pass is a winner, with stunning views for its entire length, However, for anyone suffering from acrophobia, the very steep and completely unguarded drop-offs could be quite intimidating. Travelling eastwards through the Bavianskloof Bioreserve, you'll first traverse the Grasneck, Langkop and Hochhardt passes before arriving at the summit and western starting point of the Kombrungs Pass. This is the final pass within the Bioreserve before arriving in the lush low-altitude valley known as Purkis. From the summit of the pass, at an altitude of 592 meters, you'll be able to enjoy sweeping views towards the east, where most of the descent can be seen all the way down to the next crossing of the Bavianskloof River, as the road follows the ravines and contours down the eastern slopes of the mountain. The pass is named after a local farmer, Mr. J. H. Combrink, who had a lot to do with the routing and construction of the road back in the 1930s. Government funds were made available through the hard work of the local farmers. The road from Kirom, where the railway bus turned around to go back to Willowmore, through to Potensi, was finally completed in 1940, after a hard slug of 10 years. The road finally opened up a trading route for farmers going either west to Willowmore or east to Potensi. This and the other plateaus in the area were formed during a period of erosion and are an accumulation of the softer elements of the Table Mountain group, mainly the Chodini Formation. This finer and more fertile soil supports grassy Feinbos. The presence of grasslands means a wider variety of grazing animals will be present. Near Bergplatz, red hartebeest and zebra are frequently seen. Floods have regularly ravaged the Bavianskloof with devastating effect. The first recorded flood was in 1847, with major episodes occurring roughly every 10 years. Even today, the R332 is very much controlled by the river levels. As the road descends into the low altitude valleys of the Kocha and Khrut rivers, the vegetation becomes lush and almost subtropical. For the observant traveller, you're likely to see cycads growing on the opposite side of the valley. There's plenty of game in this final section, where you're likely to see bushbuck, kudu, yellant, cape fervet monkeys, and of course, large troops of baboons will entertain and delight with their antics. In 1971, in an attempt to save the last remaining of the Cape Mountain zebras in the Bavianskloof area, Cape Nature Conservation initiated an operation where five animals, consisting of four stallions and one mare, were caught and relocated to other protected areas. One stallion died during the operation and two stallions were sent to the Mountain Zebra National Park and one stallion and the single mare were relocated to the De Wip Nature Reserve. Both of the De Wip animals died without reproducing and both of the stallions sent to the Mountain Zebra National Park also eventually died, apparently without reproducing either. In 1980, a report of a single Cape Mountain Zebra in the Bavianskloof area was received, after which no further sightings were reported, indicating a local extinction. During the latter 1980s, efforts were made to consolidate the then non-contiguous mountain areas through the purchase of properties. This enabled several reintroductions from 1990 onwards into the Bavianskloof World Heritage Site in an attempt to re-establish the species in this area. The reintroductions were only partially successful and the Bavianskloof World Heritage Site has not turned out to be the stronghold of the species. However, the protected area nonetheless maintains a small but stable population which is intensively monitored. 
individual animals are identified and tracked by means of their unique stripe pattern and population growth is monitored by means of aerial surveys. The zebra mainly utilize the Bergplas and Wittrichens plateaus. Be sure to watch parts 2 and 3 of the Kombrungspass which deals with the lower half of the descent. Thank <phone> you. <rings>